Welcome back to another quick tip video. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the incredible drag and drop technology inside of the Retrolog 2 synthesizer. We'll also have a good look at the effects page and have a quick look at the arpeggiator page. First up, let's have a look at the drag and drop functionality in Retrolog 2. I'm going to pick up on this section and drag it over the top of the parameter I want to affect. Now I've got the LFO controlling the cutoff. And it's a matter of being creative again with the parameters to further develop this sound we created in the last quick tip video. You'll also notice down in the matrix, it's created a new rule. So it said that the LFO is going to control the cutoff. Now I can control the type of oscillator. And each one will have its own unique sound. In addition to editing important parameters of the LFO, you can define when it's restarted. You can have it turned to off so that it's never re-triggered, or you can re-trigger it every time a note is played as long as another note's not held, or simply re-trigger it every time a note is played. You can swap over to another LFO and once again drag and drop the LFO control over onto another parameter. As soon as you do this, you get a new rule down in the matrix. So now I'm controlling my ring modulator with the LFO2. It really does present us with quite a lot of options in terms of almost intertwining these LFOs with different parameters inside of Retrolog 2. And this drag and drop technology gives us almost spider web-like control over things like the amplifier, the filter, and the LFOs. It's a really neat way of being able to connect different important components of the instrument up together. Let's go over and have a look at the effect page. We can turn effects on by clicking on that order or just by clicking on the on off button. In each effect, we can control the parameters in the mix. We can drag and drop the order of these effects using the bar along the top. You can also go and load individual presets for each effects module, which is pretty cool if you don't know exactly what an effect does. It gives you a nice starting point. It is really important to have a good look at the effects because each effect component makes such a huge difference on the overall sound. There's also an EQ section at the bottom, once again with its own built-in presets. To continue the journey through Retrolog 2, let's go up and have a look at the arpeggiator page. It's the page in the middle. Now, you can turn the main arpeggiator on using this button. And now we've turned on a step arpeggiator. We can control the number of steps by dragging out with the rectangle to the right. Now we can go in and transpose these individual arpeggiated steps. So we can use the arpeggiator as an effect, or we could just hold one note and have the arpeggiator control one individual note. I'm just going back and changing some of my parameters so that you can hear the arpeggiated effect a little bit more. Remember I said that small minute changes make such a big difference on your overall synth sound. So I want some more attack. I think I really want to shorten this sound up actually. So once again, I'm going to use my amplifier. Drop the attack, drop the delay, the sustain and the release. There's also a preset section. Now you may not get the right preset straight away. So that doesn't work very well, but you can just keep going. I'm going back into the preset menu, just loading another preset. I'm actually giving you a very basic introduction to the arpeggiator section inside of Retrolog 2. That's another video in itself, which I'll do later. I can go back to my filters or my oscillators or the oscillator mixer or even the amplifier and the modulators to keep messing further with my sound. It's almost as though it doesn't end. You just go backwards and forwards in between different pages of the Retrolog 2 instrument. And if you like me, you'll find something that you like, save it, and then keep going 
and building your own bank of presets. Now, speaking of presets, the arpeggiator page itself has its own preset. So if you find something that you like on this page, you can save it. And then when you're happy with the overall sound or tone of your instrument, you can save it as a Retrolog 2 patch. In the next video, we're going to take a close look at how Retrolog 2 takes advantage of VST note expression to allow you to put different parameter controls on single MIDI notes inside of the key editor in Cubase Pro. I'll catch you then.